Hello and welcome to this special discussion on the wire. Uh, we are uh, talking about the unprecedented event which occurred today. A uh, four senior most Supreme Court judges meeting at just Justice Chalmeshwar's uh, residence uh, to to address the media. Uh, this has never happened before in post independence history. Judges directly addressing the media uh, and uh, suggesting that not all is well with democracy and the way Supreme Court is functioning. So, yes. one among them is going to be the next Chief Justice of India. Yes. These are about the most responsible and powerful figures in the judiciary mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Today they come before us and tell us and then through us the citizens of this country mm -hmm. that we are at this extraordinary point where the institutional integrity of the judiciary is under threat mm -hmm. and the man they blame for this threat to the institutional integrity of the judiciary is the Chief Justice himself. Yeah, and the way he's conducting and the way he's conducting the administrative assignment of responsibility of benches for various cases. Mm -hmm. It is a very serious accusation as they say they don't want to be people 20 years from now who would be held up as people who failed to do their job. Mm -hmm. I think the hint was clearly to certain judges during the emergency who did not do their jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That parallel itself is astounding that we are at that mm -hmm. stage where we can draw those parallels and our institutional crisis is that grave. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so you think this, this could be a, an inflection point politically because all this is not happening in a vacuum. Uh, the, the government seems to be suggesting that this is uh, some uh, dispute among the Supreme Court judges, but nobody would buy that, right? Uh, this, this is not happening in a <coughs> vacuum. It, it has a direct link to uh, the way the ruling uh, political class is conducting itself. Well, certainly, yes. I mean, uh, the clearly what was hinted at, what was suggested today has its own implications, political and otherwise. Mm -hmm. I think to say beyond that would amount to verge on contempt. Yeah, yeah. But, but the fact clearly is that this is a battle about a huge number of cases that are dealing with the internal structure of the judiciary itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The proximate reason, as uh, Judge Gogoi himself said, yeah. is that they went before the Chief Justice today, this morning, mm -hmm. With regards to the lawyer case, which was to come up today, it did yeah. come up today uh -huh. and has now been set for Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It came up before Judge Arun Mishra. Yeah. And I think if it was a related question of allocation of benches to the judiciary, uh -huh. then I think that matter was taken up. But what they wanted done was not acceded to by the Chief Justice, as they clearly said. Uh -huh. But this is the last in a series of what they claim yeah. are similar decisions which they do not agree with them, which force them to come. So to you the think state. the lawyer case, the public interest litigation relating to uh, the death of uh, Judge Lawyer was, uh, would you say was the last straw on the camel's back as it were? There have been a series of events before. Surely, I mean, the, the judges themselves gave that indication. Yeah. They said today's event was the lawyer event yeah. and then their letter itself clearly states that this is not just one case. Yeah. Th there is a series of cases which they have not named, but clearly we know there is a background to it. Mm -hmm. There is the medical corruption case where Justice Chal Meshwar has taken a certain view of how it should be heard. Yeah. The Chief Justice had taken another view of it. Mm -hmm. There were different benches which were constituted. Mm -hmm. Questions were raised about why certain benches. Questions were raised about whether judges can hear cases that relate to their own interests, mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. um, it is after those events and the event related to Judge Lohia today, I think that they chose to go to public. Ha Arthur, your team, uh, the caravan, uh, has been consistently following up on the Lohia story. Sure. Uh, even though initially the rest of the media also took it up for some time and then for some reason uh, the rest of the media seemed to have dropped the, uh, the ball. Now you have been at it, you have conducted further investigations. Uh, and some new facts have also emerged uh, as per uh, some of your latest stories. <coughs> so what, what, what is your expectation now? This PIL, do you think uh, PIL relating to uh, death of Judge Loya now in the in light of today's uh, press conference by the uh, four senior most judges, do you think it will go somewhere or at least it will be, it'll be examined uh, seriously? See, clearly, so far in the Judge Loya case, oh. we have seen an abdication of responsibility from every institution, oh. which is why the final family finally spoke up. The police has not done its job, it has not investigated to the satisfaction of anybody concerned. Oh. Uh, 
there has been no political reaction or involvement even from the opposition mm -hmm. the, uh, the sorabuddin case itself has drifted in many ways yeah. uh, that, the that it itself is a separate subject of exactly. uh, of uh, possible inquiry you know absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the media institutionally has failed the, the media's role largely in the loya case including otherwise sort of vanguards of sort of liberal media like ndtv and indian express certainly the english version of ndtv have actually worked to bury the case rather than actually examine it and we've looked at the evidence since which leaves the judiciary as the court for last resort because other institutions as i said including mm -hmm. media have largely failed mm -hmm. we have looked at it extraordinarily you know there is a set of few hours in which judge loya has said to have a heart attack and died mm -hmm. the extraordinary fact is after this level of inquiry a national level inquiry mm -hmm. even today we don't have a single eyewitness or a single document that actually proves mm -hmm. that this is what happened to judge loya how mm -hmm. difficult could that be there were mm -hmm. several judges along with judge loya mm -hmm. some of them should come forward and i'm told the family has also not given their final signature to the police medical mm. legal uh, uh, neither uh, has the, the files yeah mm. no they have not given their testimony has not been taken uh, the people who themselves have written entries in the occupation register claim that has been tampered with the ecg record is tampered with there are no other records every attempt to sort of come up with witnesses has failed uh, and the family has not withdrawn the allegations they made on camera to us all i'm saying is this is a family that's aggrieved it's a judge who is hearing an important case what we need is to have the feeling that justice is seen to be done and certainly yeah. in this case it is not being seen to be done yeah. and in a, in a further investigation uh, artosh uh you have brought out and uh, another uh, act lawyer activist from nagpur has even given the wire uh, uh, an interview uh, suggesting that that in that vip guest house those two two days or two or three days that loya was supposed to have stayed there is no entry under his name uh, and it, it is it is those dates are uh were they, those, those dates are blank uh, it doesn't show him staying there show him that in fact so they, the do, authorities do, are saying two rtis mm -hmm. and this is part of the story does not end mm -hmm. are staying telling that they have no official record or anything that will substantiate that just sloya actually stayed at the vip guest house okay. mm -hmm. so we have no official proof of the even simple fact like where he stayed you think those things would become part of the pil uh, uh, are, uh, are uh, they or uh, will they become uh, 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 all i am saying is that these are extraordinary facts mm -hmm. that they are open to question we are not prejudging the case i think lot of people who want to bury the case are prejudging it i think these should be part of the inquiry everything should be examined we must try and understand what has happened and uh, what better that he is if he's died a natural death that the family meets some satisfaction that still does not take away from the second part of the story that he was under extreme pressure to deliver a certain kind of judgment mm -hmm. which nobody has contested nobody has debated which is actually far more worrying which was, which suggests that in the justice sorabuddin in the uh, sorabuddin encounter case yeah. itself there has been a Um, uh, a lack of justice being seen to be delivered yeah even uh, i think senior bjp leader arun shori had told the wire that since the supreme court had in the first place uh, uh, had had monitored the sorabuddin uh, case being given to cbi it was under their instruction that cbi was brought in so it stands to reason that the supreme court uh, under supreme court some uh, mechanism should be set up to at least clear the doubts about loya's death <coughs> to his close family members uh, son wife uh, father etc right absolutely and i mean how difficult then we and it is no longer a question of not just the family it is that as a nation we need to know that certain events can be clearly examined in public and settled in ways that are acceptable to everybody are seen and this is done transparently mm -hmm. why is there a need to bury this case under the carpet mm -hmm. if the circumstances are simple it should be simple to demonstrate what, what, what is your sense since you heard you were there at the press conference at uh, justice chelmeshwar sure. house and you heard justice gogoi sure. uh, allude to uh, judge loya uh, pil being uh, being allocated to a certain bench which obviously they were unhappy about sure. and justice gogoi is i believe the senior most after uh, deepak mishra should be the chief justice so He's so does this lend a certain seriousness to the loya case now uh, uh, but, but what, do you think what do you expect what, i think this is in line with exactly what i've been saying mm -hmm. that what they want nobody is prejudging the case mm -hmm. they want that justice is seen to be done whatever that justice is yeah. but there should be a process which makes it clear that mm -hmm. 
there is a serious attempt to deliver justice yeah. and so far the questions that are being raised suggest that there is no attempt to deliver justice but yeah. to bury it at least all the facts should be credibly brought to the to the fore and in front of the public and the family family and they should be examined mm. with an open mind and both parts of the story should be looked at one is the circumstances of the death mm. and second the extraordinary pressure on him why was there pressure what was the need for pressure on a mm. judge mm. why did we not trust a judge of cbi just to deliver a fair judgment in such a case who was putting that pressure what had happened in the sorabuddin case yeah. and did any journalist uh, hartosh uh, ask a follow up question to justice gogoi uh, on uh, the judge loya uh, case uh, on whether the supreme court would indeed come forward and set up some transparent mechanism to clear the air about facts surrounding judge loya said did anybody talk about it clearly the judges were reluctant to take any questions itself in fact the loya question is probably the only one they actually answered yeah. clearly so as to leave no doubts as to what had transpired what had led to this press conference today that's what surprised me i think that's the only that's the only reference which uh, which actually uh, uh, which which is substantive in in terms of what the judges said they they, they didn't explicitly speak about the medical uh, yes, examination uh, yeah. the scam uh, or 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 the aadhar today dushan dave has written in the indian express sure. uh, talking about other important sensitive cases like <coughs> like uh, aadhar uh, where also he is suggesting that the benches are being sought to be fixed so uh, so so where is this where, where is this leading up to arthur politically tell me now the government is uh, has taken a strange position that this is something happening among the supreme court judges and they'll kind of resolve it uh, but public perception is obviously the world knows that uh, that this is not happening in a vacuum sure there right. is something <laughs> some uh, external uh, what is politics has a role to play here is once you have four of the senior most supreme court judges go with an appeal to the public mm. it becomes a political issue it becomes an issue for every political party to intervene and ask mm. questions mm. because how the very fact they've gone to the public means it can no longer be resolved within the judiciary yeah mm. and to say i've been watching various senior journalist raise questions about uh, uh why are political figures meeting judges why is this happening mm -hmm. this is no longer about whether it should be politicized not it is politics it, it is out before the nation it is out before the public mm -hmm. there should be political parties now addressing this question there yeah. should be press conferences mm -hmm. there should be an attempt to understand the gravity of the mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. i think people who are trying to suggest anything out of the extraordinary out mm -hmm. of the ordinary in political mm -hmm. interventions at this point of time have lost their minds they don't understand how a democracy should function yeah. this is exactly where now politics has to step in because the judiciary has been unable to resolve something like this the government i think has taken the position that they will not intervene and i understand why the government should not intervene are you surprised that the social media uh, activists who support the government the hmm. uh, they have started attacking these four judges well, look <laughs> this these are people as i said who had decades on the supreme court hmm. and today for them to suddenly wake up and attack these people hmm. clearly means their agenda is political the people attacking them are the people who support this government or this dispensation or this ideology mm -hmm. so clearly we know where they are coming from yeah. and uh, the question today as i said of institutional integrity of comparisons with the emergency actually indirectly raise questions about the nature of this administration and how this government has been functioning yeah. so mm. in that sense it's a wake up call to everybody yeah. and in this a political class has to step forward and actually play a role yeah yeah and uh, uh, and hartosh now uh, uh, what's your uh, uh, what's your sense about the other supreme court judges i am told that there are a lot of younger judges in the supreme court who who have a good reputation uh, they they, are, they seem to be there is a perception that they are silently with with these four ju sure. judges uh, senior most judges who have sure. taken a stand and uh, these senior most uh, these these four judges also have a a good reputation behind sure. them so so what's your sense of, about what might happen within the supreme court now do you think deepak uh, chief justice deepak Mish, uh, mishra will uh, will react respond to <coughs> this or will he talk to these people will try to resolve it uh, is it is it going to get contain or is this going to get is is it going to blow up further well i mean it is at this point in an extraordinary measure mm. that deepak mishra is going to be tested yeah 
it is important for him to set aside his personal ego mm -hmm. and step forward as the head of the most important institution one of the three in this country mm -hmm. and actually find in ways this can be diffused to the satisfaction of the judges who spoken today mm -hmm. if he is going to continue working by administrative fiat mm -hmm. and bypass or leave these judges out in terms of consideration in terms of such decisions i don't think this matter is going to get resolved it is going to worsen divides within the judiciary mm -hmm. it will make the public perception of the judiciary mm -hmm. problematic okay. and then there is a question of what happens there is a further legacy question the question of how <coughs> the new chief justice will take up the burden from this old one what is mm. going to happen mm -hmm. so i think there is now an extraordinary responsibility and pressure on deepak mishra mm -hmm. quite apart from the criticism he has faced he has to show that he is the chief justice of india not mm. somebody who is going to by arbitrary fiat run the judiciary thank you very much arthur for talking thank to us sir that's all for now